Hello and welcome everyone to Downtown Variety X. So uh, La Mama and Culture Hub um, decided to pass the mic this week, canceling their usually scheduled programming and read out um, basically offering this platform and asking if it would be useful for where I am in my process right now. And if so, um, if I would like to to use this space to speak to or uh, this is good stuff, uh, connect to um, what's happened at this moment right now. So I want to say thank you to them for having um, having a way, um, having an approach, having a response that felt truly loving from an organizational standpoint um, and um, based in action and not just um, kind words. Um, so this has been a difficult period for a lot of people, a difficult week, uh, especially um, for me as a black man, as a black queer man, as a black queer person, um, and in thinking about what would make sense to um, bring to the space today. Um, I thought about gay and black queer men in my life that I've collaborated with and um, and, the, and the love that is in those collaborations and in those uh, connections. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to platform that, those conversations. Um, and so I would like to um, welcome author, facilitator, destination experience designer, uh, I'm sure so many other things uh, into the conversation, Alupide <laughs> Sean Brown. Hey, MX, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm sweating. It's warm in here. Um, but I'm very happy <laughs> to be here and be here in conversation with you. How are you? I'm wonderful. You know, I'm wonderful. Of course, it's a roller coaster ride that we're all on, and it's it's quite thrilling. Uh, but you know, I'm here, and I'm <laughs> I'm I'm just here, and I, it's so so. I just want to say thank you very much for providing this platform and for your generosity in opening it up to uh, to 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 us to show the work that we've collaborated with you in doing and um, focusing a, lo a little bit on what we're doing along our healing journey here. So I just want to acknowledge you and say thank you so much for continuing the practice of your art and being visible in the world as a practitioner of your own healing art and making a way for all of us. So I want to thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. And so um, I thought it would be lovely to have you here in this space um, because of all the work you do with Bloom. And, um, you know, it's um, you have organized trips for people to feel safe in, in countries or spaces that sometimes we don't hear about that in the news. Um, and more recently, I've been participating in your uh, training. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess I just wanted to invite you here to to acknowledge work that's already happening, already collective action and the uplifting of uh, African diasporic communities. Um, and just wanted to hear and share a little bit about that. Could you tell us um, how Bloom started? What's the impetus for that and, and um, what you're doing with that work? Wow. So thank you for that question. I'm going to engage in a little bit of storytelling um, because it's easy to focus on what the work is now, but it is a part of my own personal journey. I came here at 24 years old to New York City. Uh, 34, uh, you know, 36 years ago, and I came as uh, a black man, uh, Christian, <laughs> with a Christian upbringing. I was a lawyer at the time, and I walked smack dab into the middle of the AIDS epidemic of the of the early 80s. And so, um, you know, can you imagine bringing everything you know to New York City, uh, leaving everything behind? Because a lot of my relationships in Jamaica at the time were shot. And so I was starting out at, uh, from scratch, as many do in this city, um, being uh, young in their 20s, coming from Mississippi and Trinidad and Haiti and all over the world. We brought our youth here and um, we ran right into that epidemic. 
And so for me, um, Bloom has been the pathway to finding my own family and community. I remember one day after the West Indian Day Parade, just kind of walking through <laughs> Eastern Parkway, just completely lost MX. You know, not having family, um, you know, uh, uh, friends passing away. Uh, and it pretty much mirrors the time that we're in now. So it's been a journey to create community and to make a home for myself, to find a space for myself to be. And in so doing, pull together a group of people that can make that happen. So Bloom really unfolded from, from that from that journey, and that's essentially what it is. And you've been there, <laughs> you know, you danced at our first party, Bloom took, uh, when it initially came out in about 10 years ago, uh, when Barack was inaugurated, um, the first party was uh, was a collaboration, it was a party, and it was between art and, uh, and music and photography and all that kind of great stuff, and it was brought together by a collective. Um, so we have continued in that vein, and over the years we have been a community, a philosophy, um, you know, a space, a party, again, now a, a movie that we're going to see later that uh, amplifies the creative and visionary voices of the people of the African diaspora. So it's been an unfolding journey. Um, and again, the through line is uh, what can we do together to work together um, to create uh, collectively that which we must for our own economic viability to create spaces where we can be safe and uh, all that kind of great stuff. So that's the process of the journey, and I think it mirrors much of what's needed now. Amazing. And, you know, I see woven throughout uh, the different aspects of the work uh, in your own producing and the way that you produce and in the way that you coach others to fully embody uh, their own truths, that there is this mm -hmm. elemental framework. Yeah. And I'm curious if you could just bust a little bit of a uh, background about that elemental framework and how that uh, shows up yeah. in your practice? Well, I'm a curator of, um, of information and I've done several personal development courses, you know, all over the place. I've studied with uh, Maladuma Somme as well as done transformational courses, been involved with metaphysics and all that kind of stuff. But I took an interest in five element theory. And it's the whole idea that five elements uh, provide a framework for us, for anything to be in balance. And those are the elements of mineral, uh, some people call it ether, uh, nature, uh, that's the element of air, fire, water, <laughs> and earth. And so it's looking through those lens as a metaphor. Of course, as a legal, with a legal mind, you know, you talk about precedence. So it's almost like you can look through those elements and find a framework. It's easy to find a framework and it's easy to curate people's work uh, and see the framework in everything that we're doing, whether it is in our projects and the way we have conversations and the way we come together as a community. You know, when they're there, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. So if those elements are in place, uh, anything will grow, except I want to give this caution. Uh, there are, there's knowledge, you know, which can easily be gained and um, everything is spouting knowledge and you can see the frameworks all around us, um, you know, but there's another thing called experience. And so uh, sometimes the knowledge and the frameworks get, out, get up beyond the experience. <laughs> so life has really been about uh, making sure the knowledge, the framework um, for growth, it's clearly there, syncs up with the knowledge and the personal experience. And I'm no, you know, I'm not someone who would say that I'm a perfect exemplar of, of that work, um, but it's something that I'm always aware of, that there's knowledge on the one hand and there's experience and I'm continually learning and growing. So the piece we're going to see, uh, for example, is an elemental hero's journey. And I think Seik and you will have a conversation about that. So it's taking Joseph Campbell, let's say the hero's journey, for example, and really putting it on a, the body of a black queer uh, man and in this instance, and uh, watching the elemental journey through all the five elements of tr as, as he changes. So that's one way of using uh, the elements, and we'll see that in the piece that's going to be shown. Beautiful. Thank you. And it, and it was that transformative work that I thought would be an appropriate um, thing to, to show, to meditate on, to mm -hmm. be with um, this particular week and in this particular call. 
uh, and especially also that it was made out of uh, a group collective effort. Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll, uh, I'll chat with Seku um, after we watch it. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much for uh, joining us. And uh, where can people find you and your work? <laughs> thank you so much, MX, um, for yeah. again providing the space. And um, yeah, um, more to come, more to come. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Blessings. And now we're going to uh, watch Bloom the Return. Um, and it is about 20 minutes. And then uh, we'll speak with the director right after.
विस्मये 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 विस्मये
Yeah. Hello and welcome back, everyone. Um, <laughs> very... Hello and welcome back, everyone. Very excited to be joined now by Seku Luke, mm -hmm. the uh, Bloom Returns director. Welcome, Seku. Hey, Max. What's up? Good to be here. You know, <laughs> out here living that life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's get right into it. I just wanted to uh, a say it was an amazing experience to be involved with that film, and um, it was such a lush production experience. Um, even though we shot that in a very short amount of time, um, but I guess I'm curious about. Um, how that film came together and, and I guess what it was like for you to be operating inside of that collective dynamic. All right, cool, awesome. First of all, I just wanna say thank you for um, for allowing us to show the film and for, for reaching out to us to, to experience this. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm, you're interviewing me, but I, I really know I'm representing a larger family, a larger collective. It was so amazing seeing everyone's faces that that, la that scene the homecoming scene with the tableau of the family coming together and just looking at the faces and the eyes of, of like my, my brothers and sisters and, and remembering the experience of putting that together and, and that project really was was set in a game it was a, a um a little approached me and said i wanted to create something for world pride and it, we, we said we imagined and tripped it up. We had only three months to, to, to put it together. But we decided we wanted to do it differently and work in a collective and collaborative way where we set a frequency and, and, and setting out a call and drawing the artists that vibrate in that space. And really it was about telling the Bloom story and telling um, the story of the mantra that, that Bloom has. I can, I, we have a mantra in Bloom. It says, I can hear myself. I can feel myself changing. I can see myself. I'm connected to all life. I am home, and that's a journey. And so we wanted to tell that journey and get that journey out as a love letter to the world. And it came about where we set that frequency, and creatives came together. We collaborated. We worked differently. We worked without the, us the same hierarchy that you usually get on set. We worked in a space that people could come in and share your gifts and stretch and, and learn and grow. And we wanted to tell our own story and, and, and fund it. So we only spent three thousand dollars on um, to as a budget to make it because what made up for that was the gifts and talents and energy and love that was poured in together in a community coming together to create to create art. Amazing, and I'm, you know, I'm touched to <laughs> to hear or to to have been in the process and see how it sounded like it was really also affecting your own sense of possibility. In, in what you can create and what we can create together. Um, and I think I said this in the first part, but again, I just wanted, I thought that film was just such a nice thing to watch in a moment like this, because we're seeing so many traumatic images of um, things being done to black bodies. And I was like, well, what are some images that can give us something else to connect to, you know? Um, and, and that film is kind of the first thing that came to mind. Um, but I know, you know, you also are involved in other activism things. I see you showing up to document actions and this kind of thing. And then also that you use your work to uplift other people's voices. Um, so um, I think uh, Maddie's in the chat, putting links in the chat, but uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, the work you're doing now and the Creative Genius Report? Oh, cool. Yeah, and then I'm gonna jump into. I want to talk about that, but I want to touch on something that you just mentioned about um, this moment because I think I I, I, do, I really want to speak to how we see this film, especially from the collective. From the I've been speaking to some of the different members, and and how we see this film in context of of what's happened today, and yes, we see it definitely as 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 being able to see different ways we see black bodies. I'm um, seeing it, seeing them powerful, seeing them love each other, seeing them celebrate, seeing them joyful, and that is so vitally important. Um, another, the, the the piece that was so exciting, especially about um, putting this project together as well, it was a sense of us saying we're going to create for ourselves. We are going to build with what we have. We're not going to wait for somebody to give us a permission to sign off, but we're going to. We are fully sufficient 
in creating and telling our stories and creating and telling the narratives. And that's especially when we think about this time, what are we creating in this space? And that as we answer those questions, what are we creating and, come, and coming up with that? And we start answering, there are ways that we want to create. There are ways we want to, to, to tell stories about ourselves and make our, and, and show um, our, our history, you know, in that sense. So it's, it's been that. And, and so with me, it's been collaborating also with other, other groups. So the Creative Genius Report, that's another platform that's operating very communally as well. CJ South, who um, heads up, so that's his big platform as well that he had set up. Um, he works in the collect collective collaborative way, so I'm working with that project as well and telling stories that, that usually don't get told and get seen. So with Creative Genius, we're highlighting the creatives behind the major moments that you'll see in pop culture and fashion and music. But we're, we're telling uh, about the, the creative who's at work, the creative geniuses at work behind the scenes who are putting that together and sh sharing their stories. So we have a piece right now um, by Gerardo we just released, who is a, a Jamaican-born um, hairstylist who was a key here for Paris Fashion Week, and we followed him and shared his narrative. So yeah, that's what that's what really um, I I really recognize. I want to be creating in this space are stories that that change how we see ourselves and change how the world experiences us. Amen to that. Ashe. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yes. Brilliant. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for. Uh letting us screen the film. Um, it's awesome. just Thank you. Always a pleasure, every interaction. Um, so awesome. uh, until the next time, more soon. So much gratitude. Thank you. Thank you so much, MX. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So next up is uh, a brand new piece. Um, I've been collaborating with uh, Xavier Ryan, who has a project called Trigger Music uh, for a few years now. And uh, about a week ago, he reminded me that we made a song called Burn It Down. And I was like, can we release that? Because, and I said, okay, great. Let's, let's figure out what that is and what that means. So we, um, he re reworked some of the audio. And then just in the last two days, I put together the video that we're about to watch. Um, and I think, um, you know, again, a part of the, the kind of impulse behind this conversation and this uh, event tonight is about how we can use the creative arts to transform trauma, to reframe our trauma and um, make it something that can be usable energy. Um, and it also, I think, is a way to document affect and to create opportunities for that transformed trauma to, to be palatable and um, communicable uh, through the medium. So this is a uh, brand new hot off the presses and we'll speak to Xavier right after that. Talk the way that I walk, the way that I move, reflect the sun and moon. 
This is just the way that I talk, the way that I walk, the way that I move. We're in the in-between, it's wet and drenched with void. Hey, and we're back. Welcome back, everyone. Um, and we're joined by Xavier Ryan. Hello, Xavier, and welcome. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. Um, so this was a, a fun challenge and journey to, to try to whip this song and video into shape this week. Um, but uh, I'm curious, um, I guess I'm curious about what was your first impulse to to revisit that i mean there's some obvious reasons but um we haven't actually <laughs> really talked about it we just kind of like did the work um you know because yeah you're giving like gemini twin energy and i feel like you present in one way but then as people get to know you they they realize there are sides that are less obvious that don't meet the eye so i'm just curious about your response to this moment and and that track and you know anything that came up for you around uh getting it together for that yeah so the track, I think we, we were in the studio one day and we just, we were messing around and you came up with these lyrics, burn it down. And that was completely, I was dope because during that time, especially I was exploring this um, more into politics and uh, analyzing like leftist theory and political activism and what violence is and now this is happening and we're experiencing like this burning and people are are uh finally um uh, i would say acting on so much oppression and it's building up and it's what's happening and i think uh those lyrics deeply <laughs> reflect the actions of what's going on. Yeah, and um, something I haven't mentioned on the call is that viewers may have noticed this is an intergenerational conversation. And I see that with all the respect in the world um, and and we're getting younger as, uh, as guests go along. And so I've always found it really um, interesting and inspiring to have conversations with you around these kinds of things because you're younger, uh, Xavier just said a 25 uh, birthday, happy birthday, <laughs> right? So, um, and, and I'm 36, so there's, you know, just some difference in perspective there. Um, and that's always useful for me, but I'm, I'm always uh, surprised by the things that you talk about when we start talking about triggered music and where that idea came from and the, the party that's related to that. Um, so I'm curious if you could just uh, speak to us a little bit about what was the inspiration for Triggered Music, the name, and what you're trying to do with that party. So Triggered came about with the kind of discourse in media where people use that meme uh, Triggered to describe people who get easily offended by situations and act out in anger. And 
I kind of wanted to use that mimetic language to kind of reclaim it in a way where like I'm triggered. I'm trying to, yes, uh, be okay with that um, feeling or anger or happiness or sadness, every feeling and being okay with that and addressing it. So not just, you know, covering it up or suppressing those feelings, being able to address whether it's trauma, whether it's happiness, whether it's sadness, whether it's like all those, all the spectrum of emotion. Yeah, just being able to be there. <laughs> yeah, to be present. And I found it interesting because, you know, you talked about having parties with a theme of violence, for example, <laughs> which is not something we usually think of when we're thinking about a theme for a party. Right. Um, but but there is um, yeah, just an urgency to be present with what's actually going on right now um, that I find in your work. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, expressing that that could be kind of uh, off-putting violence, but um, it's not necessarily what people should think about when they think of violence because they're it's it's a very simple thing. Like um, you experience violence when uh, you have to walk across the street to make somebody else feel comfortable mm -hmm. simply because of your race. That's like violence. Or when you, I don't know, when you just any any type of oppression that you feel during the during the day, based off of a, phen, uh, a phenotypical information like uh, gender, sex, uh, race, you know. So that's pretty much what I want uh, want people to focus on with uh, addressing what violence is and how we could address and, and feel and be present with that concept. Amazing. Well, you know, I do, I do feel that in, in the work that you make is always very kind of complex and somehow dimensional um, in the, in the sonic landscapes that you're, that you're kind of identifying and building. Um, and so thank you for helping us find ways to be more present with these, uh, very difficult, <laughs> difficult things to sit with. Um, so um, I'm going to move to the next section. So I just want to say thank you for uh, your heroic remixing of that track this week <laughs> um, for encouraging us to put it out into the world uh, and for joining us tonight and sharing your thoughts. It's always thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. You too. Okay, so um, next, um, the, our kind of final section of the evening tonight, um, I'm going to play some quartz crystal singing bowls and also metal bowls. And um, in thinking about what to share tonight, the first thing that came to mind was some relief <laughs> because uh, it's almost, yeah, just being bombarded with so much content right now that's uh, deeply troubling um, and necessary to see in some way, uh, it's also important to take moments to uh, refill and refuel. So um, I thought I would play the bowls for everyone who's out there doing the, the good work, fighting the good fight this week and uh, needs to receive some energy. Um, I'll also mention um, that I recently released a series of guided meditation albums called Crystal Consciousness Theory and Practice, and that evolved out of a series of live workshops that I did. Um, and you can go to Healing Sound Meditation and download the first one for free. Um, and uh, that one is just about how to energetically connect with a crystal. And then the, the last track on there is just a sound bath. So you can go to healingsoundmeditation.com. And when you click on the first album, when you add it to cart, it's just uh, free or zero, or you can 
uh, put some money in there if you so desire. Um, but that is there for you. Um, and as we go into this next section, I'm going to play for about 20 minutes. Uh, you may want to plug in your good speakers or put on headphones so that you can get the best uh, possible sound. We're doing our best here with microphones and, and things. But if you can uh, get good output on your end, that'll help. Um, and yeah, just make sure you're in a really comfortable position. You can have your eyes open or closed. There will be visuals. Um, but that choice is obviously up to you. So uh, I'm just going to take one moment and get myself sorted out here and we'll get this, get this going.
Okay, well, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope that was useful for your practice today and that you can download that sound bath, that healing sound meditation, maybe help you go to sleep at night. And I just want to say thank you again to Lama and Culture Hub for extending uh, this platform for this conversation, for making this space. Um, it really felt like um, a very loving uh, and generous and um, welcome organizational response that really comes from a human response. Um, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for um, Alubade, Seku, and Xavier for joining us and sharing their work with us. Um, and if you're still in the chat, uh, I believe Maddie's going to put some links for uh, places that you can donate to support. Um, and you can also find places, um, more resources on lamama.org. So with that, I will say thank you and good night. They move like the wind. I can't tell why I begin. But I'm right in between, right, right, right in between. But I'm right in between, right, right, right in between. You can find me in the seams. You can find me in the seams. They move like the wind I can't tell where I begin 
when I'm right in between. You can find me in the sands.